Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, my Saturday stream, which is always a stream with friends. And today we have here Landon and Sasha. Say hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> hi guys. So nice to see you again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. It's <laughs> nice to have Sasha here. I always, I am always a stan of when Sorry, cat's going crazy. Always a stand of when Sasha is here, mm -hmm. giving us the hot takes. You know when it, Sasha's here, it's going to be a juicy stream. Peppers. Spilling <laughs> the tea and all of that. Yes. That's what I do. <laughs> all right. So, um, Landon, well, we have a lot to, well, I'll say this first. We have a lot to talk about today, as we usually do, because you yes. guys know that Sasha is very good at generating all the thoughts. And so we've got we've got a really meaty episode. So we're just going to kind of um, hop right into it. Sorry, no favorite things this week. Um, but that being said, Landon, what is it that we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about online community management, which actually is all about community management in general, but specifically filtered towards the online sort of thing. So if you want to run a Discord server or a chat room or any type of blog or group, this is the place where you are going to get the rules and advice of experienced veterans like Karen and Sasha, and then me who kind of just is in the background watching it all happen. <laughs> well, what I hope we're going to have from today is um, I've run a lot of communities, Sasha's run a lot of communities, and Landon has been somebody that's been um, one of the mod team on lots and lots of communities as well, under me and under others. So she has the perspective of like... Yes what it's like to kind of, I guess, work under somebody for free, I guess you could say. Well, um, also seeing all the different kind of management yes. styles that, there, that exist. So mm -hmm. this is just all about what we think is the best advice going forward and the top like tips of how you need to do it and how not to have it implode in your face because it's kind of easy for it to implode in your face if you're doing something wrong yes <laughs> that happens you miserable you could just be <laughs> yes. constantly miserable you'll just be like i did this and i had dreams and every day the internet makes me want to log off forever it's like well maybe if you're doing something wrong if that's how it makes you feel mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. i really shouldn't yeah. But yeah, just like just like uh, Landon was saying, this should work for like any kind of online community. So we're talking about subreddits, we're talking about Discord servers, we're talking about forums, you know, anything really. So we're not we're not talking about platforms, and we're not talking about like role play specifically. We believe that these tips we're going to share today should be for any kind of online community. Um, so you guys know like mine and Landon's past with running communities. We've talked a lot about it before. So you guys are super familiar. So I'm not going to kind of beat a dead horse there. Welcome in, Kay. Uh, love that emoji. So happy for you to join us today. Um, but of course, you guys can see this is a Sasha stream. We have Sasha as our guest today. So um, Sasha, you, you guys probably don't know quite as much of details about uh, Sasha in regards to their running communities. So can you tell us a little bit, Sasha, about why people should listen to you for this topic? I have two great reasons. One, I have been running my own online community for 11 years now. Yes, thank you. Whenever we Sasha stream, it's cat ears time. <laughs> my girl, Belle Delphine is back, everybody. Anyways, um, I have been running my own community for 11 years now. Um, for reference, I am about to be 32 this year. So I've been doing it since I was like 2021 20, for like a while. So I have grown up through this process as well. And so I've had a lot of time to think about it. Um, and then also I've been banned from a lot of things. I've been thrown out of a lot of bars. <laughs> Not like a lot, but like consistently enough and with enough force that I'm like, I know what makes me most likely to misbehave. And then there are times when I have respected the decision of somebody who has been like, you can't do this. And there are times when I've been like, I can see how inconsistently that you apply the rules. Um, and then I learn and don't do that to other people because I don't want to have to trigger a Sasha because there is a Sasha inside of us all. So, uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> so that is why you should listen to me. I have been on both sides of having to like moderate people, sometimes extreme behavior, and then being the person who has been like very irritated with, um, with inconsistent community management. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. And I would say you've definitely been fairly and unfairly banned and everything in between over your <laughs> time on the internet. <laughs> you know, some, you know, listen, there are times when I'm like, you know what? I get it. I do. <laughs> hilarious side. The, the person that um, I most respected for banning me turned around and asked me to be an admin on their forum. So... But I think that that goes to show a lot. It shows that they're like, that I think shows good ways of running management, of knowing who it is you need on your team, which is something we will talk about as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, okay. So the way that we're going to talk about this today is kind of in the idea of the way a corporation runs. So of course, an online community is not a corporation, but there are reasons that corporations do some of the things that they do. So we're going to take the things that apply to online communities as well, and we're going to talk about them. So what that means first is that I would like to share with you guys our mission statement for running communities. This is our, our mission statement, and we encourage you to adopt something similar. So to lead our communities with equality for all members by strong ethics, not strong feelings. So we've got two keys in our mission statement here, and that is equality for all and strong ethics, not strong feelings. So what we would like to talk about first is saying the strong ethics, not strong feeling peace. So Landon, when you hear that, like, what do you think about that? Well, it's important to recognize that ethics, so the morally good and bad, is different than the things that feel good and bad. And that ethics are more black and white and feelings are all of the things in between because they are changeable given the situation or what is happening or who it's happening with. So when we're really thinking about like that, you need ethics, not feelings. We're talking about the fact that you need to think about what the good and the bad is, the things that are acceptable and not acceptable versus what you're feeling about them. Uh, so I think that that is an important aspect as far as leading like a community, uh, especially because the community is going to get bigger and you're not going to be able to control all of the feelings inside of it. And you might not even control how you feel about it. Yeah. So that being said, Sasha, I know you had a lot of thoughts on this and, uh, and I Barbara Monger, the community that you run, um, definitely runs on ethics. So can you tell us more about what your thought was in putting this down here. Oh, thank you so much for the howl, Lunar. I really appreciate it. That howl is your cue, Sasha. <laughs> howl? Yeah, she howled. We can't hear it, but there's can't hear uh, it. The, Twitch, the Twitch howl. But they heard it. <laughs> oh, woo! <Okay. laughs> I howl for bits. Okay, so um, you need to have better rules than just, if you upset someone here, we will take action. Because the thing is, is that people get upset over all sorts of stuff all of the time. Um, people get upset because they have their own issues and baggage. They get upset because they didn't have breakfast that day. They get upset because something is going on in their lives. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean that someone has actually harmed or wronged them. Um, I think a lot of people, um, in, in a way a lot of communities are run these days, is there, is there a safe space uh, for everybody. And as you know, I really hate like the uh, watering down of social justice language. So what used to be like, hey, you don't get to come in here and say like blatantly racist and homophobic stuff has become like, this is a place where no one should ever experience any kind of discomfort because they're interacting with the public. And I was like, that is not how being in public works. Um, I didn't really write about it in this, but like, that is just being in public involves the natural friction of other human beings. It is unavoidable and it's not even, it's not even bad. It is just part of, of being alive, of bumping up into people. So the thing is, is that I think people go in with really good intentions to be emotionally responsive to a user base, but you do this, you are bone. You will be a sucker because as soon, like the most vocal and whiny people will very quickly be able to 
find the way to push your buttons and pull your levers. And it is not uncommon for people to have mastered the way of phrasing their discomfort as a form of harm. Um, and that is my next point, which is you have to have a strict definition of like what counts of harmful behavior. Like in my server, I do not tolerate slurs. Like that is a hard stop for me. Um, if someone blocks you on my server, you don't get to like make a bunch of accounts and try to keep contacting them. Um, on the other hand, I let people pretty much advertise for most content. Um, as long as it is properly tagged and labeled, I'm not here to like go through and police exactly how you ask for it or what you ask for. Um, because the thing is, is like, for example, oh, my difference between harmful and potentially annoying behavior is, is someone persistently, forcefully, and specifically targeting you. A slur is persistent because it's just so intense. It's very forceful and it's targeted. It is directed at like a specific person or group of people. Um, attempts to DM you are specific. Um, but if you see an ad you don't like, you can just like scroll away from it. If you don't like a conversation that's happening, uh, you can close the tab and walk away. If you don't like somebody, you can like block them within the server and not interact with them. Like, and you know what? You can actually leave the server. Like that is something that you can do. You are required to have some level of self-management. And so that is kind of a barber monger ethic where I have had, we have very intense discussions sometimes and I have sat back and I have watched pe two people be mutually upset about a discussion. And both of them have like taken a deep breath and been like, hey, this topic is actually starting to upset me right now. Like, let me tell you that it's upsetting me. And the other person is like, hey, I'm kind of triggered too. Like, this is what I'm trying to get at. And they will both like reel themselves in without me having to step in and do anything. Like people understand that there is a line of like, I have to be taking care of myself enough to participate. And if I can't do that, it is on me and not some sort of like third party to parent me because I'm there to lead people and guide them, but I am not there to parent them. Yeah. I, I think also like the thing that you said is, is being able to self self-regulate. That is a huge part of something that I think overall the internet struggles with being able to self-regulate, but it is a necessity to be, to have it, to be in a community, but certainly to be the leader of the community because, or, or anywhere on the mod team, because if you're not able to like take a step back from the situation, take a deep breath and figure out all of the pieces in a situation, you're not going to be able to deal with what's actually at hand. Yep. And I think about things like when you're saying this, I think about things like you know how a lot of servers on Discord, it's very popular to have like a vent channel, right? To put the negativity. So like, I'm not really a big proponent of vent channels. Y'all know that. But if you're going to have one, then you can't just set, you can't police discomfort in there because you created the channel that's for discomfort. So if you're going to have rules for your event channel, they have to be specific because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen right now. If you don't, someone's going to come to you and say, so-and-so is venting about insert, you know, really triggering topic for me, I need you to get them to stop. And it's like, no, you need to mute the vent channel in that case, because we don't have a rule against insert triggering topic, right? So when we say ethics, not feelings, it's examples like that. And if you don't have strong ethics, they're going to convince you that they're right because their feelings are real. And if you care about others, which I assume you do, if you created an online community, that's going to affect you. Yeah. And, and the other hand on that too, is that it, you need to have strict rules because there will be people who go the other way, which is what they'll start to dog whistle. If you don't have those rules about slurs or about actual intentional harm or anything like that, um, people are going to start using a vent channel or uh, slide by the rules that they feel are not being uh, as monitored as much because that's the nature of the internet. And that's nature of not only the internet, but online communities. People are gonna give it away, try to get away with as much as possible and as much as you'll let them. Mm -hmm. um, so being strict in those rules and knowing where are your ethics is an incredibly important part of this. Yeah. yeah. This is just kind of an aside, but like I, do, I have like very, very loose rules in Barbermonger 
for a long time, I did not even have a rules channel. I was like, you're, you're an adult, figure it out. And then very, very belatedly I did. And they are still very loose. I do not, I have never had problems, honestly, with people doing a lot of slurs or harassing behavior because the, like the air, the vibe of the server is such that you could tell two things about me. Like one, I'm serious. Like you don't see me like treating people in a way that they can't treat me. We'll be more on that later. Um, and just, I am, I'm committed to enforcing it for everybody. And so is everyone else. Like there's no, there's no favoritism. And I'm serious, I guess is the thing. Like sometimes people have rules. They're just CYA rules, but you can't just be like no racist slurs and then like allow other forms of racism like there will like there will be a point where you have to really believe in what you're believing in mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you and you have to, and you have to decide and you also kind of have to decide like are you saying no racist slurs here because you are like an actively anti-racist slur or anti-racist server and you are going to be watching for other racist content or are you just like i just don't want to get my server kicked off of discord but otherwise people can go wet and wild and that's something you have to know about yourself and like what you're truly getting into uh because they are two servers that are monitored or two communities that are monitored in very different ways mm -hmm. um yes and Next. we're not and we're not <laughs> going to tell you that like one ethic is the right ethic but it's more about like you need to know what your ethics are because the second you don't someone's going to be able to push you in a different direction mm -hmm. and also what ethics you can actually hold to so there's mm -hmm. like a difference between being like i would love to be an anti-racist server but that and actively being one are two mm -hmm. different things Yes. Uh, and, and that you have to be honest with yourself with that being like, okay, I would love to, can, I would love to be able to monitor this, but if you can't monitor this and people see it in the rules and expectations, they're going to have feelings about that. And that is going to disrupt what you are building. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that I'll say that's sort of related to this is like, so vent channels, like, what do you really want there? Another great one is, are you going to have a politics or a deep discussion channel? Because, oh, I've seen so many people get hoisted by their own petard with that, being like, I'm going to have a channel where people can have serious discussions. And then just like regulars and admins just completely melting down because they were just not ready to do that. Like they aspired to be a certain kind of way and and they couldn't do it and they they turned around and they were like this is now this is now harmful to me and it's like okay and that brings me to my next point comfort is not an ethic comfort is not an ethic say it with me comfort, comfort is, not, is an not, an not an ethic not an ethic <laughs> it matters why someone is uncomfortable there is a difference between someone being uncomfortable with racism and someone being uncomfortable with like this other person posts a lot of they talk about their dog all of the time or i find their tone kind of grating or i think they're gross or weird or arrogant it's like they're not particularly doing anything to me but the way that they do it or just here's the thing like people can be just generally disagreeable to you in boring ways because you have a variety of personality or belief differences but again you are in public so <laughs> Your you your comfort does not get to define a public space by default. There are like there is respect for your humanity that is required, but that does not mean that your comfort rules all. And once again, the good intentions of leaders being like, I want my people to be comfortable, just it will always break down sooner or later because what makes one person comfortable is going to make someone else uncomfortable and without a grounding ethics for like why that comfort matters it's just going to break down because mm -hmm. as karen said like the intensity of somebody's feelings in a moment can be very persuasive and if you are not referencing like well, why do I, why do I prohibit this one thing? And why is this other thing allowable? If you don't know that, if you haven't thought about that, then it's just not, it's going to go badly.
And if you make it your problem too, because I've, oh, ooh, here's another big thing. Have people talk to each other. If someone comes to you and they're like, so-and-so has made me uncomfortable. I don't like them. It's like, have you talked to this person? <laughs> this is an adult thing. Like someone's annoying you so much, like DM them. Yeah. Be an adult. Or just, just, or just ignore or them. them. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. Like a lot of times, like, have you considered that people don't realize that you're annoying them? Or have you considered <laughs> that maybe like you're misinterpreting them and making their behavior about you when it is not? Yeah. Have you considered that maybe you had some sort of weird interaction that rubbed you the wrong way that was completely accidental? That this person might even just apologize to you if you just had like a 10 minute chat with them? You I've would had, be amazed if you just- I'm having, like, so, many hey, <laughs> I'm having so many flashbacks. I've had so many flashbacks at times that players have come to me and been like, this plot line is annoying me, or this person responds too fast or too slow, or this person isn't doing the plot that we agreed to. And I'm like, okay, what did they say when you asked them? And they're like, I asked you first. I'm do like, you, wow. Do you know what <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to? I'm having flashbacks to my sixth grade classroom. Act like adults, people. Like, get <laughs> over your feelings or talk to them. Don't come to me like, Miss Teacher, can you please solve this problem for me? No, you're fine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> do the thing. If, if somebody is like, again, like harassing you, if like behavior has seriously escalated, I will step in. But like a lot of the time, it's just like, you could just go to somebody. And in so many cases, again, with me, like people being bothered by something that I've done, but they've never told me about it. I don't know who I've bothered. And like, I can't moderate my behavior in a public space towards somebody if I don't know how they feel about me. Had I known in various cases that somebody was just like, Sasha, I'm not a fan. Like, then I can adjust my behavior towards them. I can look out for you. If I see you in the public square, I'll sit on the bench on the other side. Like a lot of people are not like, even me, even me, troll Sasha is not out here to like bust up your day in the park. However, I, I do think it is an important caveat to say that your feelings about a person doesn't matter in their life. Like if someone is at the end of the day, like, oh, I'm so annoyed by Landon. Congratulations that you're annoyed by me. I'm, it's also not my responsibility to change myself to fix your feelings. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like, that's so depends, the other thing right? too. It depends on what you, they're annoyed by. Yeah. yeah. If it's, if it's talk, if it's behavior that you deem that makes you feel uncomfortable, absolutely. You can have a conversation about it, but just because you have a conversation about it, doesn't mean you're entitled to that change. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that the mods or the leader of the community or you as the leader of the community get to decide what is changing and what is not. Mm -hmm. uh, and if someone annoys you, and that's part of the whole ethics thing is that that can't be nilly willy as a leader, mm -hmm. but as a person participating mm -hmm. in it, it can be, but it's up to you to regulate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm not necessarily going to change everything about who I am just because it rubs people wrong. Um, again, yeah, because as Landon, Landon so artfully said, no one's entitled to it. And I think you do see a lot of that entitlement around discomfort where people are just like, you've made me uncomfortable, so you need to change. Um, but it is worthwhile. Like if it bothers you that much, um, your first thing that you should do is try to talk to the person. Um, like so many people are afraid of like very basic disagreement or like conflict resolution. And it's really just like, it is a great skill to learn. Like it is okay. You will survive. The other person will often survive. Like 99.99% like of the time, it's gonna be fine. And if nobody practices, nobody will get any better at it. That's so. true. That's true. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think when it comes to this, so I'd like to go ahead and move on to our, our next key from our mission statement, equality. So while we want you as a community leader to try to get out of regulating just people's feelings, you are going to sometimes have to um, settle disagreements. So your members, I guarantee you, whether you realize it or not, whether you understand it or not, they're watching for how you settle those disagreements, which rules get enforced, 
which rules don't get enforced, which of these conversations take place publicly, which of these conversations take place privately. They are watching, every single person in that community is, and it is important that you keep things equal, that you keep your behavior equal, that you keep the way that you enforce rules with people equal, if the way that you enforce rules changes from person to person, I guarantee you people are going to notice and there are going to be consequences. So I know, <laughs> um, Sasha, for some of your bands that were a little bit less fair, I feel like this Most probably... Most of them were, Karen. <laughs> this probably is a big reason why, right? Oh, yes. Absolutely. So I guess, you know, preface for like, me getting thrown out of the bars um it's like a a huge thing that has generally driven that to some degree or another is unequal enforcement of rules and so um to be totally honest sometimes i'm legitimately just dense more often than you would think so i've i will go into a community and i will kind of assess like, what is the level of acceptable behavior here? And while I tend to push that envelope a little bit, I am not often like deviating too wildly from what is available. I'm not posting like political content in general chat. I'm not going into slice of life role plays and like creating the most grim dark characters in the beach town. I am going into spaces where there is a sign that is like, look, this is the volleyball court. And I'm like, I love volleyball. <laughs> and then I play volleyball and they're like, not you. Not you, not the way you're playing volleyball. Because the way you're playing volleyball makes us feel bad. And I'm like, it's a volleyball court. I didn't, I didn't see any rules here about the way I had to play volleyball. No spikes on the volleyball court, but Sasha's over here well, like serving spikes. <laughs> listen, is there, is there, did you say that? Did There's no sign. That? There's no sign. It's just, it's just There's like all implied, that. right? <laughs> yeah, it's always implied. Um, but so what happens is that I've seen is once you establish a community, there will be a huge temptation to treat friends and regulars differently. You will want to treat your friends differently because you like them. And you will want to treat regulars differently because they are contributing the most to your community's success. Uh, this is natural. Like these, you know, these people have taken time to accrue social capital within the community, uh, but uh, social capital should only purchase social rewards. Like in a role play space, more people want to role play with you, but it cannot purchase rewards under community rules, the law of the land. So like, just because someone is more active in your community or they're your friend, that does not mean that like, they can spike on the volleyball court, which is what I've seen. Cause that is the other thing. Like, it is not just Sasha, you can't spike on the volleyball court. It's like, well, this other person, when they wear purple on Tuesdays, they can spike on the volleyball court. And I'm just like, <laughs> because, and, and, and what's also been so angering about this is that again, this is the fairness thing. So like, you're telling me, that you know these rules are to protect everybody or to be fair to everybody or to maintain a certain community vibe but actually those rules are permeable and can be violated by other people at will and due to your personal preference like th that just means that your ethics are fake that means that you've lied to me and that and you know what and this this is where i actually get thrown out of the bar because the first time i spike i'm like okay accident but then I just want to spike. Then I just want to come get you because you've you've revealed to me your inconsistencies. And that's that's where I, you know, that's where some people like me will get feisty. And because you're because I'm sure some of you wonder, like, but why does this person invest this energy and time in breaking the rules? It's because, well, sometimes it's just because people are bored and annoying and lonely, but other times it's because you have like sort of instigated them in a way with your behavior and if there was changed behavior you would get changed results like most people just want to have a good time actually um so yeah do not do these things do not treat your regulars differently do not treat your friends differently and i don't mean like having jokes or having a community culture because people are just like oh well like clicks are okay actually and i'm not supposed to like joke with my friends in my community i'm like no 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 
I mean, allowing your rules to be bent or broken or only participating in the community when talking to your friends. Like if you are a leader, if you are managing a community, you actually do need to socialize with the plebs. I'm sorry. You do. Yeah. I do want to say not that necessarily the socializing with the plebs, but treating everyone equal because it is natural. Like Sasha was saying Mm -hmm. to be drawn to the people who are not only your friends, but are also contributing positively to the community. It is natural. And I think for me personally, this particular rule is one of the hardest ones to follow Mm -hmm. because when someone is contributing negatively to the RP, they deserve the same amount of equality, the same amount of chances, the same amount of rules and expectations to someone who is contributing positively. And that's really hard at a human bias, protect what is mine standpoint to sit there and accept that like, no, it's not even like treat everyone equal. It's the same thing of being like, I have to check my feelings at the door and come at this situation the same way that I would have if it was Karen who was doing this behavior. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've encountered that. Um, oh, we've yeah. had situations where somebody wants to do something and they have a lot of social capital because they've been there forever. They're friends with like three fourths of the community. So everybody likes them. So we know they could do the thing and it would be fine actually. But the reason I will tell them no, and, and Landon, I know you've heard me say this like specifically, you can't because that means name of other person that most people don't like will be able to do it and do you really want them to be able to do it and it's like well no well then you can't then no one can that's just gonna have yeah. to be how it is because then it's not fair and mm-hmm. i also want to pull the curtain back on this one and say that i know so there are scenarios where i can't speak for sasha because i have not i have not worked with sasha but where Karen and I have fucked up on this, yeah. where there are times where we have let somebody do the thing and then it bit, bite us in the ass because we were realizing being like, oh, why could so-and-so do it and so-and-so can't? And it's like, oh, that's actually an incredibly good point. Next time we know that so-and-so can't do it because we still don't want this person to be able to. And you know how awkward it is to tell somebody that's like, oh, well, they've been in our communities for five years. That's why they can do it. And like, that is fundamentally unfair. It you is can't very do that. Unfair. So, no, and it and yeah. it what that does is it stops people wanting to be in your community for five years yeah. because they have to then like earn that right. And that's being part of a community is not earning something. It's simply just being a part of the community. Yeah, they're not gonna mm-hmm. spend that much time to earn it. They're just not. No. Yeah. Especially if they're being treated poorly and unfairly at the beginning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we'll kind of get to why that is also bad with like discussions of hierarchy and like the difference between a community and a friend group, yes. which is yeah. another thing that people so much love to confuse. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, so let's, let me just see what was my other point. So I think we had that bonus round point. Yeah. I think we need to go a little bit more into that before yeah. we move to the next um, thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I just want to say if you treat your friends and your regulars differently, um, you are also going to make your friends and your regulars worse because they they will understand that they get special treatment. And so they will begin to act differently than regular community members. They get ruder, they get more aggressive, they get entitled, they will expect you to make exceptions for them. They will be more sensitive to perceive conflict and they will expect you to intervene and resolve it. So like the thing is, is like people know when they're getting special treatment. I know when I get special treatment in a community or at my job, like I am very tuned in to when someone is letting me play by a different set of rules. I think most people are, they can like feel it. It's like, it's like this, we are very, we are very social creatures. So even if you can't like put words to it, I think you feel it inside when you know so-and-so is getting special treatment and it's, it's especially frustrating when you can't figure out why. So you don't know how to make it happen for others. Yeah. And you don't know how to make it. Ha- yeah. You don't know how to make it happen for you. And just like, I guess I will say this is perhaps my weakness in some cases. It, this, more, this more happens in like real life. Um, I do tend to get special treatment um, either by looks or by charm. And ooh, I will tell you once it starts happening, it's just, it's just too much fun. It's just too much fun. (laughs) Like my ability to resist is so bad. Like I, you know, refusing special treatment. Like once you put it in front of me, I'm just like, it would be rude not to accept a gift. So like you don't eat, you don't want to put it out there for people. You just don't want to do it. 
So, I relate to that so much because I, I have I have the same thing. Like I give I give a very, very good first impression. And so, um, you know, if you start me down that road, it's very hard to stop once it's started. It's so fun. <laughs> yes. It's so fun. And that's that's I think something that needs to be mentioned too. It's very hard to stop while it's started. So if suddenly, for whatever reason, you're giving a friend special treatment or or, or a positive community member special treatment in your community and then they do something that you view as not positive and you stop giving them special treatment the amount of backlash that you are now going to receive due to that is worse than if you had just treated them equally to begin with yep Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. (laughs) Um, even trying to get them to understand why like we can't do this anymore like that is a very hard conversation and your chances of having that successfully without damaging the friendship is really low um it's just too difficult it's too difficult especially if you are coming at this from a place of feeling which is usually what happens in these scenarios you really like this person so therefore the ethics are, are are bendable and therefore you are treating them unfairly in a positive way that they regard and then uh all of a sudden that stops your feelings are involved, their feelings are involved, and so is their ego. Mm. And it's not, it's not a good look. It's not an easy situation to, to deal with. And emotions are already then heightened. Uh, and someone feels that they have more to lose. And that's really hard to then talk about and contain a relationship uh, when you are in that mindset. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Guess who got their ring light to work halfway through and now my face is not so yellow. You are Yay! so you are so angelic. You're uh, glowing, Sasha. Sasha. <laughs> Truly, like, the little the, the perfect little highlight on your nose is just like bing. How could anyone ban me? I, how could we've done nothing wrong done nothing ever? Wrong. I've done nothing wrong. Okay. Nothing. Uh final final round. You, the admin mod, are not special. You're not special. I get it. You're like, but I've worked so hard to make this. Yes, we get it. But that was your choice. You decided to do that. People have the right to argue with you as a person and even as a moderator. Your decisions are actually up for debate to some degree. Um, Like this is, this is a thing that I think people, oh, people fall prey to this because they're just like, well, it's my space. So this can be the one space where I get people to kiss my feet. Like, you're like, this is the space where I don't have to listen to anyone arguing with me. I'm like, like, I will say like on a deep level, part of me is just like, okay, can you just go play the Sims and like exert your will (laughs) on like non, like the desire to unilaterally enforce your will on living beings is just like, I'm like, like, I get it. We're all feel sad and out of control, but also weird. Stop. Um, but like the, the tiny amount of power that you can give people and they, people go berserk um, is, is incredible. And also like you are a fallible human being with gaps in your knowledge and thought process. Uh, people have the right to argue with you and you should consider this. Um, you have the, you have to make final decisions and the, when the time comes, like then the debate is over. But declaring preemptively that nobody can argue with you ever is not only petty, but like it, you will miss so many opportunities to improve along the way if you do not engage with people's disagreements or debates. Like I, I'm pretty smart and I'll tell you, I still don't know everything that I am always learning and that I have blind spots and by nature of them being blind spots, I don't know what they are until somebody argues with me or confronts me about them or is just like, we should do this instead of that. And by being open to that, I'm, I've been able to evolve and grow my leadership process over all of this time. Um, but also just like by allowing other people to treat me equally as a community member and as a person, this is what makes this sa- the space feel, I think, genuinely safe in a way that other servers have basically looked at me and been like, you're some sort of like weird ruleless anarchist. And at the same time, they're just like, how do you have so little misbehavior with so little enforcement? And part of it is because just like, if somebody has a problem with me 
or the way that I'm doing things, like nobody represses their emotions or their feelings about that. Like if you don't like what I'm doing, like people don't bottle it up because when you would when you don't allow people to like actually argue with you or sort things out, what they do is they're going to repress and they are going to be like a long-term problem. You're going to just have simmering bitterness and disagreement in a space that will slowly intensify. Mm-hmm. If someone is annoyed with me, they could just come and just like honk my clown nose and be like, shut up. And I'll be like, maybe I will, maybe I will shut up. Like, or like, maybe that was mean. Maybe that was rude. Maybe that was harsh. And like, because they're able to just come to me and like, treat me like a person, like it, inst- it just clears that out instantly. They're like, if I'm mad at Sasha, I can tell her and we're done as opposed to people having a simmering dislike of me or my policies. And so they don't feel the need to lash out because they know that they can just say stuff to me. Mm-hmm. So that is that is a huge thing. I, I think also, the point of this is 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 dictatorships don't work. They don't work in any in any area. I will say God God kings don't work. At the end of the day, I think I do sort of have a dictatorship. I am the final law, but like in like or at least I'm the one who like the sword falls on. Yeah. Like ultimately, if I if the fuck ups are all mine at the end of the day, but. I'm not a god. I am not the god king of the server that you must worship in order to participate in my space. And people definitely act like that. They're like, it's my space. And if you don't treat me super special, then you can't be here. I also want to say for those of you out there who might be thinking, well, no, what about in this situation and this situation? It's also important to recognize that it's a really easy and dangerous path to fall down that as soon as you put yourself in that position where you are the end all be all decision maker and no one can argue with you, the next time making that decision to do that will be easier and then easier and then easier. And before you know it, it's not a one-time decision. It's not a one-time exception. That is how you are running your server. Mm -hmm. And you won't even realize that that's how you're doing it because that's the message you're sending out. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's incredibly important to acknowledge that, that there isn't any time that that is, if you don't want to fall into that trap, you can't do it. Mm-hmm. Very true. Very true. All, All right. right. You'll survive people arguing with you too. Like I have had long discussions with people sometimes about like this, this is also a thing. This is an aside, but like there have been people who will be banned from multiple communities. And then I will go talk to them and be like, I'm going to sit down And just explain to you in detail why the thing you're doing is bad and what I think you should do instead. Like, just do this. And I have been able to correct behavior in some cases that people have not been able to touch for years. I've like, I have interacted with the ultimate problem children and been like, what if you just do this instead? And they're like, nobody ever gave me a solution before. Like everybody just like told me to kiss their boot and kicked me out. I'm like, you know? So just like, it is it is important to kind of come at people on that human level. Okay, core values. Oh yeah, okay. So we've talked about our mission statement. So just to remind everybody, our mission statement is to lead our communities with equality for all members by strong ethics, not strong feelings. And the way that we actually support that mission statement is through our core values. Oh, we didn't mean to go back. We meant to go forward. Here we go. Let's go. Okay. So our core values are respect, strength, kindness, integrity, and accountability. So we've got little statements for each of these that I'm going to read you, and then we're going to go into the details. So Mm -hmm. respect for healthy and thoughtful hierarchy. So yes, we're going to start getting into the hierarchies that exist in online communities. Um, The next one, it's strength of will to go against the grain. So we're going to talk about how you can do it right where everyone else is failing. Kindness, (laughs) Kindness, <laughs> because we're all doing this for free. That's you. That's your mod team. That's your members. That's everybody. No one's getting paid to run online communities. If you are, tell me how you did that. I would like to know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Integrity to lead by example. So we're going to talk a little bit about setting good example from yourself as the leader. And accountability to each of our communities. So this is where we're going to go into some more detail on the concept of how the buck stops with you. So we're going to talk about respect first. So 
Um, Landon, give us a little bit about respect. What do we mean? Respect for healthy and thoughtful hierarchies. And then, um, Sasha, you can make your points on this one. So respect for healthy and thoughtful hierarchies. The thing is, is that you have to recognize, and as it's been said before, and it will be said again, an online community is not your group chat. If you have a button that can delete the server, delete the subreddit, that can control other people's posts, that can change anything about the situation that you are in, you automatically have power. Whether you want to admit it or not, that is a fact. And that plays into the relationships that exist within this community. That is, that is unchangeable. If you have that power, that affects the relationships. So instead of denying that or pretending you don't, part of this is having healthy and thoughtful respect for it, of knowing that power and how can you use that power in a way that uplifts the community rather than in a way that controls or uh, dampens the community. So I know that I know that Sasha has a lot to say about this too. Oh, buddy, do I hate the phrase <laughs> tight knit community? Oh my, just flames out the side of my face when I hear that one. Uh, inter interwoven with each other all the time. God, it's so okay. So let me explain. So a group chat is where everyone is friends. I want you to think of like a group text message, like everyone has equal power in the group chat. You all know each other. Anyone can leave at any time. No one can delete each other's messages or texts. Generally, everyone knows each other. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes this is what people actually want in their community. Like you just want to have it to be you and your like two to 10 friends. And that is totally okay. You want to make like a subreddit where all of you are moderators. You want to make a discord server where all of you are admins. That is cool. That is fine. You, or you can just have a group DM like that is okay if what you really want is just to be hearing about the day of like 10 people mostly i understand i respect that that is fine that is fine i have group chats i have dms that is all good uh power to you but you understand that everybody once again has like equal opportunity and power in that situation it's there's no leader you're all in the dm together you're all in the group text message together um, a larger group chat, I'll call this like an organizing chat, is that's where it gets a bit bigger, perhaps includes some people who are not your friends, but it's generally centered around some activity, but everyone's still equal, like no one's deleting posts, no one's handling reports, um, you don't know everyone, but no one person is necessarily in charge, so like now you can think like, once again, like a very large group chat, like um, WhatsApp chats, I think are a good example of this, or some like Instagram influencer chats where they we are one for like, Animal Crossing. I think our Animal Crossing yeah. server is a great example of this. Yeah, our yeah our Animal Crossing example is probably the closest. Karen's still in charge and can delete my posts, but like, well, technically, <laughs> I gave it to Shadow, so she actually is the one that can do all that stuff now. But there isn't really a leader. No one's doing any of that. It's not like yeah. that. It's just because yeah, Discord but, makes us make someone the admin. <laughs> yeah, but like generally speaking. Like, you know, no one's necessarily in charge. You can break off from the group and have your own friend chat. But, you know, this is like a specific kind of thing to do one particular thing. So, yeah, like the server is literally called only Animal Crossing, like is only like that. And the rule one is like, this is only Animal Crossing. OK, we are only here to yeah. do all Animal Crossing all the time. I think That's there's like three rules, right? And one of them is only Animal Crossing all of the time. Yeah, a rule that everyone <laughs> has respected even me look at that clear rules clear rules i'm good at them so and then you but then we get into community which is where a power structure starts to exist there are roles and there's some level of hierarchy and now there's more strangers it's not just like friends are like friends of friends the people are coming to the community not based on knowing somebody but based on whatever like the central interest or topic is um and now you now it's gonna to start to get a little more complicated. This is what happens. This is the thing where people start with what I'll say, like just kind of in, to make this relatable to me. This is when people go from like my small private role play to wanting to open it up and get new people. I'm just like, I need you to understand 
that once you cross that line, it's going to require like a behavioral shift from you. Like those are two very different things. And you cannot continue to run that community the way that you did when it was like your group chat or your Sasha, organizing it, to, chat. to clarify, what you're talking about is when you go into something that maybe used to be a group chat or it used to be an organization community and you say, let's recruit and grow this thing. So is that, that's, that's what right. you mean? Okay. That's what I mean. Like, again, like small, small, tiny private group role play of five or six people. And they're like, you know, let's get another five or six people from outside. Let's, you know, take applications or like, you know, Karen would be like, let's post the the Animal Crossing thing on um Discord uh, to get more, you know, people from outside. Yeah, Karen's like, hell no. <laughs> if um, I ever did that, someone like t- stole my soul and is like operating my accounts or something. Okay. Like, I don't know. You, you've, you've been animorphed. You've been yeah. Jerked. Okay. I have taken over Karen. The long-term plan of slowly taking over Karen has worked more. Well, at last, Landon's true plan revealed. That's the real title of this stream. Um, but yeah, so, so those those are different things. Um, and so when people say the phrase like tight knit community, and they they're just like, hi, there. I have a senatorial class in my large server of 10 people that talk and get special privileges. I'm just like, you don't have a tight knit community. You have regulars just like, and and all of you are friends and send each other mail. You have a server of 1500 people. You are not a tight knit community. Just like, just the cringe and being able, and like the refusal of them to accept it because part of what people want to believe is what they they just want to be like but we're all friends here i'm like no in a public space in a community space by default everyone is not friends everyone (laughs) can be civil with each other everyone can be organized around a topic or collective goals but the thing is is that the goal is what's important actually and the civility not like everybody being friends and so just yeah Mm -hmm. no i just just to give you like image of that that would be if your entire server showed up to a park and only 10 people were sitting in a circle talking and being like hey we're a tight-knit community can you imagine 1500 people at a park and only 10 people people. talking yeah that's not a that's not a tight-knit community no that's (laughs) like one picnic table is filled up and everyone else is at the park doing whatever they want to do at the park hiking or playing on the playground or whatever right they're not all interacting it's really easy to think that, like, to think of numbers as not people in online communities. But, like, mm-hmm. when you do that, when you fall down that trap, you forget that, like, no, 1,500 people is a lot of people. That's a shit ton of people mm-hmm. <laughs> with all we're... feelings and history and past and psychological whatevers. Like, come on now. You do not know every single person's name, let alone be a tight-knit community yeah like I think I have 800 or 900 people in my server right now and there is a core group of people that I talk and like most of them I have like voice chatted with I've sent a bunch of them like Christmas cards like I have people I've known there for like over a decade or members who have been there for like five plus years at least but like I would not describe us as a tight-knit community and I comically I am reminded of this at random times when people who are lurking will like show up to post about one thing they'll be like I just they'll just jump in and I'll be like who are you and then I'm reminded this is a park (laughs) park. this is a park and people are walking their dogs here all of the time like just because they're not talking to me does not mean they're not here and it does not mean that like I am friends with everybody I don't, I guess this is kind of a thought that you should have if you are a regular in a particular community. Uh, Just be aware that it is a park. You are at the park. And just because you are not seeing somebody doesn't mean that they are not seeing you. You might be behaving like people will act. You know, people will be at their picnic table and they will be very loudly talking about, this is also why vent channels are bad, you guys. Someone is going to be in the vent channel talking about something like, hugely personal and they feel like they're talking to their 10 friends or to the 15 people who emoji react i'm like you are not you You are are in the park you are in a public park (laughs) and you and like absolute strangers 
are watching you at all times. And like, do you really feel comfortable? Would you feel comfortable direct messaging your vent to every single person in the server? How would that, just think about that for a second. How, what, would you want to do that? If the answer is no, maybe you should stop. The things that I know about people from vent channels who Ooh. probably hate me. <laughs> oh boy. You know what? I, I, mm -hmm. Bad stuff. Bad yep. stuff. Yeah. Okay. So next, next thing, uh, staff turnover. <laughs> Yes. So in re in regards to this, we just want to talk a little bit about staff turnover in kind of the section where we're talking about hierarchies, um, because this definitely plays into the downfall of a lot of communities that we have seen. Yes. So um, if you don't know this about me, I live with six people and I've been living with six people for almost seven years. So this is all. Yeah, this also probably... It's been a five people for most of it, but it's been six for like the past two. So the point is, is that uh, part of my skills are like, I physically have to participate in a community like all of the time, the community being my house. And we all have to kind of learn to get along in some ways. I didn't know anybody before I lived here, by the way. I just moved in with total strangers and had to adapt. Um, and living with people is different than being friends with them because like, you might like somebody personally, but like, do they wash their dishes on time? Do they leave stuff on the counters? When do they take their showers? Do they throw their food out of the fridge? Like, do they play really loud music at night when you are trying to sleep? Like, you learn these things living with people. And just because you are friends does not mean that you are necessarily good at living with each other. And a hard part about friends moving in together, and this is why I've always avoided it, is that friends will expect you to go easy on them and to cut them slack. They're like, well, we're friends. Why are you getting mad at me for not washing my dishes for a week? And they do not understand that those are two separate things, being friends with you and washing your dishes. Um, and this happens in a lot of communities as well. People will hire on their friends for staff and friends want that role just because they want to be close to their friend or they want kind of a vanity role or like some vanity powers. Um, and or then sometimes they... I think it's, well, let me interject here. Sometimes I think it's altruistic mm -hmm. too. Like I do think mm -hmm. that some people will like be like, my friend's running this server. I want to be a good friend and help. And like in their mind, they really believe that they're going to like contribute something, but that, that doesn't mean they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like in friendships, you can have a lot of differences of, of opinion that don't necessarily come up because you're not making a lot of decisions together. Like when you decide to hang out with, you may decide like where I'm, I'm going to meet up with my friends, like how often, what time, but just like how many other decisions, just like kind of think about it. Like, are you purchasing things as group purchases all of the time? Like, do you make payments on something together? Do you often like share a physical space with them for like multiple days at a time that involves you figuring out who uses what resources when like when you live with people you are suddenly making a lot of group decisions like both consciously and unconsciously and when you start w running a community with people like suddenly you're just like well should we ban or not ban this person what rules should we have should we expand these channels who is going to be in charge of what tasks and that introduces something new to the relationship they're like and I, I don't think a lot of people kind of think about it. Like I said, like there could be totally good intentions, but like how practiced are you at the two of you making decisions together? And like, how much do you really know about like shared values for these kinds of decisions? And so people who like get along great as friends, like go into a community or like go into a community together and suddenly their vision of like how they, or just their defaults of like how they run things or how they make decisions just immediately clashes. And people are shocked because, you know, they just, they just don't think about it. They think, well, because I like this person, like everything should go smoothly. And mm -hmm. because they're depending just purely on like affection, um, you just don't have any way to kind of resolve those things. So you kind of have to, you have to think about that like 
Like, what are the, you have to talk about your values. You have to talk specifically about like what you want. You have to have just like expectations. You have to be like, these are the things we're going to do. This is how we're going to resolve disputes. Like, let's agree on a bunch of stuff like up front and like really think about it before you sign that lease, so to speak. Yeah, the, those yeah. expectations are very important. And I think that that is like, because the other thing is, is that you don't want to bring on your friends who can be very similar to you and are expecting to do the same job as you, especially if you're looking for a mod team where you're looking to like for people to uh, highlight where you might be struggle, where you might struggle with mm-hmm. or something like that, especially in, I know that 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 is how we kind of worked Karen in RP situations Yes, where it was like, Hey, I don't have the time or the energy to make images and graphics to run this whole RP. I'm going to bring on a mod who's that is their job and their title. Um, if you're bringing on your friends, there's a chance that if you're just bringing them on for your friends, that it's going to overlap and they're not going to fill that need. And you're still going to need another mod. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love that you tied it to financial decisions, Sasha, because you're, you're absolutely a hundred percent right. Cause when you live with someone, you are forced to make certain financial decisions together, whether you want to or not and making decisions Mm -hmm. as a mod team about like who to ban about which rules to enforce more than others, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all a very similar conversations to large financial decisions. I would a hundred percent agree with that. They do feel the same. Finn, for those of y'all that, that don't know, um, I live with a group as well, not nearly as many as Sasha, <laughs> but, um, but it's me and my husband and, uh, we have a roommate and there's, he, I mean, he's never moving out. Like he's, he's just, he lives with us. Right. So there's three of us in the house and, uh, and we do make a lot of, um, financial decisions together. We're in the process of buying a house right now. So, you know, <laughs> it's tough. And I would not want to go through this process with people that were like, just friends. I, and I, that sounds like it's kind of, um, you know, uh, cutting that uh, relationship of being friends. But when I'm friends with someone, it's usually because like, I think their vibe is cool, or they also like the things that I like, or things like that. It's not that I think, oh, they'll make sound financial decisions. <laughs> right? Absolutely. But it's so perfect, because there is such a difference. Uh, so yeah, like there's more of a partnership aspect to um to having people on a team with you and the thing is is that sometimes people who are good partners it's like good janitors like what does this person do like what are they good at you don't even necessarily need to have like a whole lot of affection for them just like do they do the thing that you want them to do are they collaborative because yeah you know the person with the person who like that you love might be a slob and you would never want to live with them and the person that you find kind of annoying might be like your perfect roommate so you know keep that keep this in mind when you're you're kind of arranging staff yeah and uh keep and keep it in mind because you don't you don't want to come out of this like hating your friends (laughs) so be so just like you like don't put yourself in that situation like don't put the, don't put you and your friends in a situation where they're leaving all of their dishes in, you know, their dishes in your sink and you, you turn out to hate them when you could, the relationship would have been fine if you hadn't moved in, or this relationship would have been fine if they hadn't run a role play server with you or any kind of community with you. Yep. Yeah. For exactly. sure. For sure. All right. So that is respect. So we're going to next move to our next core value. So that is strength. So strength of will to go against the grain. So when your community gets to a certain size, you're going to notice that there is sort of a a force of will that is like everyone acting collectively, right? Like everyone is individuals, but when you kind of like amalgamate it all together, most communities have sort of like waves that they flow in, right? They, they tend to go in this direction. They tend to think these things. They tend to value these things, whatever, whatever, right? It's just something that naturally happens when humans get together because we are a collective species. So you as the leader, you have to make sure you're constantly looking at that mission statement and making sure that you're not swept away in those waves. So sometimes you have to actually go against what the collective will of your server um, seems to be pushing for. Because remember, seems to be pushing for because you've got those regulars and you've got a huge silent majority. 
Um, mm -hmm. So with that, go ahead, take it away, Sasha. So this also hugely plays into ethics because like when this happens, if you do not have like your core ethics that are not attached to feelings, like this is the moment where you will buckle. Um, and just to, just kind of an aside about buckling, like it is, <laughs> I in my experience, people struggle a lot to come back from like big mistakes. Um, so we all make mistakes, but unfortunately, like when you make big ones, uh, you tend to take the L for like a long time, both in when you mess up the first time and when you double down consistently about it because it's so hard. So there are some, there are times when you just, you just don't want to make these mistakes at all because they either snowball or they just entrench themselves. So you have to really be able to kind of take that deep breath and be like, you know, what am I really doing this for? Like you're going to have annoying people, problem people, someone who is gross. And because of how the internet works, people are going to want to rip that person's head off. We live in really sad, dystopic, traumatized times. We've had a global pandemic for two plus years now. People are messed up. Like we have an extremely emotionally dysregulated population. The internet encourages a kind of like meta social violence. Um, so this will happen sooner or later in a group and people are just going to be like, I thirst for blood to quench my rage and sadness. And you have to be able to talk them down and kind of push that off. And it, it's very easy to go along with, especially if these people are regulars and you, or you're afraid of that anger being turned on you. Um, but by going along to get along, you really just kind of are making the, the world a tiny bit worse. And also you have at this point been like, yes, when people call for blood, I will cave. And so then they know, then people know that if they get mad enough and they get enough people together that like, it doesn't matter what you believe or whether you agree, they know that their number, that the will is their numbers. And that's, and that is a point where just like, you know, once again, the rules cease to matter. And so you have to be able to like firmly compassionately but strongly be like no we're not going to do this or you just like <laughs> as you know from our anti-stream we have all been dragged into some stupid internet drama and a huge part of it was basically like the group of people who were just like i love pitchforking and we are all going to band together to pitchfork even though our evidence is frankenstein and shaky at best and then you had people who were just like I am not going to do this. I am not going to get involved, even though like we, we were being like implicitly and explicitly threatened. Um, pre like just hey, you, you were being explicitly threatened in, in the situation that yeah. we've been in. Like it was explicit. I think we can say yeah. that. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they, they, they were not messing around. Um, and so but like what happened in that situation, like the people who like went along with a bunch of gossip and you know like disinformation ended up just completely completely wrong um and the rest of us our communities are doing way way better than than theirs are to be quite frank like we continue to see like comical and embarrassing missteps um some of these communities have just completely shut down or disappeared at this point um two years two and a half years on so like having the strength to resist these things is is very important and it, and it pays off in the long run yeah um and just i, I will, will just a brief aside too because sometimes you have people that really just are kind of grading and you know like because uh, and i've and i've had these kinds of people in my community too and, and even though i get annoyed with them i'm just like do i want to be the person that's essentially like arresting the homeless people loitering outside the mcdonald's just like just because somebody is like distasteful to me do i want to like engender a community where i'm just like well people who are kind of weird and smelly i'm just going to like scare them all off like is that the value that i want to support is that the way that i want the world to work or like is it valuable to just try to get along with people sometimes or like or i will say this and if somebody does, if somebody has been awkward enough in a public space, I have sometimes like DM people and been like, hey, you continue to bring up X topic constantly. 
and you are going to wear on like the goodwill of the server like you're welcome here but like roll it back a bit like that's that's worthwhile to do to just instead of just like hard banning somebody you can just be like hey my guy you can sit here but you can't yell at everybody coming out with chicken nuggets <laughs> and people will be like and people will be like okay or they'll leave but you know like, what sasha the chicken nuggets oh. are gross i'm just saying <laughs> it's and not you but yeah but don't yell at people about it they're just, they're just enjoying the nugs that kind of connects it to earlier, which is something that I wanted to do too, as far as like, especially when you have a large majority wanting you to do something or having to go against the grain, it's that it's really that those are the certain times where it's really easy to fall into that trap of what I say goes and it's my sandbox leave if you don't like it sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where you have to lead people. This is where you are a leader of a community, not mm -hmm. just the person who's in charge of it. It is your responsibility to offer education, to offer your side of the story, to give insight into the choices you made to make this decision. Mm -hmm. And instead of just telling people, it's my it's my sandbox. And if you're not going to be Sailor Moon, then you can leave sort of thing, right? Like you mm -hmm. have to, you have to give them that insight. And that's, that's how you avoid the idea of, of dictator and become more of a leader. Yep. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. a practice skill, but these are the areas where it's the trickiest to do it. Yeah. And I want to explain this a little bit because I want to acknowledge explaining why is annoying as fuck. Okay. <laughs> I hate when I explain something and the person's like, well, what about this? Like tiny caveat 5% of the time. And I have to be like, my fuck, I'm gonna have to repeat the whole thing. Oh my God, this person is being so bullheaded. What the heck? Like, I mean, I have had those thoughts and I've had those conversations and I just want to acknowledge I know they are annoying and I know it's very easy to think that this person pushing you or this push person asking a million questions is doing so in bad faith. But here's what I'm going to tell you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're trolling you. It doesn't matter if they're in bad faith. It doesn't matter if they have some kind of crazy ulterior motive. All those people, when you've got this server that's a thousand plus people with 20 regulars, you might think that the 20 regulars are watching, but you don't know how many of those thousand people are watching and the impression that you might be giving to them to encourage or discourage their future participation in your community. So when you're mm -hmm. explaining something to some troll or some annoying person or someone who's pushed you in a direction you don't want to go, you're not just explaining it to them. There is an, there is an audience. That's what makes this makes it public, right? There's that audience watching you and they are going to take cues from what you do. Mm -hmm. And it's an important part of this also is recognizing that apathy is the death of leadership mm -hmm. that at any point in time that you are too tired to explain that you cannot explain that you feel that like well i know best because i've been through this and so i'm just not going to give my opinion because i don't need to explain it a hundred times that is where you start failing and it's annoying and it sucks and sometimes it's it, it's hard and it's, and it's like just tiring but you have to do it. There are ways to like not have to retype everything. You can be like, I've already explained it. Please look above. But it is an important part to continue to engage in that. It is. You really engaging with people is really important. I have sometimes <laughs> there's one particular guy I remember just like banning him twice, like first on his primary account and secondly on his alt. And I remember like I specifically went back and I was like, hey, what part about our first conversation was, wasn't clear and not like sarcastically, just like, Hey, like, no, you were being real. I really wanted him to tell you why he came back after that first conversation. <laughs> just, 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 I just want you to just tell my guy, my guy, like, what are we missing? <laughs> and I, I guess this is also maybe the difference between just like wanting to run your fun it might be the person you're thinking about kuma i'll confirm later <laughs> that's right that, uh kuma that's right. stop we don't we don't name names here if anybody posts like the real name then uh please please don't i don't want to mute you or yeah. anything mm -hmm. <laughs> but um but like if you it, it's hard because once again like deciding to run a community does mean stepping above like the emotional responsibility level of just your friend group and it does mean, because like, again, with your friends, you probably have just kind of like shared social values or like implicit social rules that all of you abide by. But once you get into a community, 
you start to have to like, now you must explain the rules to everybody explicitly. You have to tell them the rules. You have to explain the rules. You have to explain the rules in multiple ways because different people process things differently. They've had different life experiences and different values. And you're going to have to communicate your values to somebody who might have completely different experiences and values. And that is exhausting and annoying. And it involves you having to think about things that maybe you've never thought about. And so somebody being like, why do I have to do it this way? You're like, well, I've never thought about why I do it this way. And that is hella annoying. Um, this is why I have so many answers because so many times I've been like, but why? Um, but, but again, as, as Landon said, apathy is the death of leadership. And, you know, you like there is so much potential for all people to be able to contribute either as a leader or as a member of a community, but it, it really involves, like you, you can't be apathetic. You have to care. If you have people that care, you can often work towards some collective solution. But once you become like detached or cynical or apathetic, that is the beginning of the end. Yep. 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 Okay, mm-hmm. let's let's move to our next um, core value, I think. So next up we have kindness. Kindness. So kindness comes in a lot of aspects. But I Mm -hmm. think the most important one that as a leader, it's recognizing that we're all doing this for free. There is no money involved. (laughs) However, sometimes running a community can feel very similar to that of running a company. Uh, And you have to kind of go into this idea with the, with the same way that you're supposed to enter a company, recognizing that no one is going to work as hard as you are. You are going to be the person who's the most invested. You are going to be the person who has the most at stake. You are going to be the one with the most responsibility. No one else is going to match you on that because no one else is going to get something out of that. And you have to treat everyone around you with the kindness and respect that they deserve, which is the utmost. Yep. Yeah, this kind of goes back to also just like you need to not treat people in a a way that they cannot treat you. Um, Oh, there is like, like I said, I have a huge culture in my server where even though like I am the admin, like I accept public disagreement with me, sometimes really passionate public disagreement. Um, And this basically means like, I can never treat anybody in a way that I don't want to be treated. Like that is my rule. Like, cause I can, you know, I can be a little quippy, um, sometimes, but like <laughs> you can, I get owned in my server constantly, just like absolute kill shots 24 seven. It is the absolute newest experience. People have no problem making fun of me to my face. And it's actually one of my favorite things because when people make fun of me, in public, in my own server, it shows that they trust me. They are just like, I know that I can treat you as an equal person and that you are not going to use your disproportionate power to punish me. And I have seen so many servers where there has been so much fawning and foot kissing, or just like somebody can come in, like an admin or a mod can just smash you. They can just silence you. They can argue with you in a way where you're just like, you can't even politely argue back with them because you understand that they are ready and willing to use their power to shut you up. So like, they just flex on you and you're just like, okay, so cool. Like, I know that I can never disagree with this person or I can't go in this direction and, and they make that power felt. And that is unkind. That is an unkind thing to do to other people to implicitly or explicitly flex on them. Just, it's mean, it's, it's hurtful, it's belittling. Like, were you ever a child and you had an adult do that to you? Because it's kind of a similar feeling. Like you experience this sense of offense and helplessness. It is not a good way to like make other people feel. Like to you, you're just like, oh, well, I'm just heading off a difficult conversation. But like that other person can really feel the unkind use of your power. And just, it's just a bad thing to do. Um, I said, this is an unpaid job. You can hold people to standards, but be considerate. Like if someone 
you've granted somebody like a mod job and they are not doing it, like you can just very kindly fire them. Um, it is, you know, like you don't have to like get on their ass about it. You can just be like, hey, you know, like three strikes rule. This is what I need in the next month. Can't do it. That's fine. No hard feelings. Um, yeah. And don't assign more work than you do yourself. This is a thing where people are just like, I'm going to hire a mod squad so I can be the God King and sit on my throne and everybody else does the things that I don't want to do, like advertising or monitoring a bunch of stupid channels that I made, but don't want to deal with. That is a personal favorite. Role play servers where people have really annoying ad rules for like the different ads. I'm just like the absolute janitorial tedium of that job. And just like a bit, like hiring somebody to be the shit shoveler, like you should shovel your own shit, my guy, or at least shovel shit some of the time because to be like, I'm only going to have the fun jobs where I think about the rule changes and I get to decide who's banned. Like that is, <laughs> you see a lot of that. And then people are like, I don't ever want to approve a single role play application. I don't want to look at those not even once some people like to shovel shit that's different uh but just most people see, don't though like most people like to shovel shit for a paycheck and all of these jobs are free so you know <laughs> i will say listen but I, I will say like every like what is fun to people like differs like person to person some yeah. people are just like you know what i am totally fine for example spamming role play ads across discord i put on my podcast and i copy paste like a G or people are like, I don't want to read a single application. I will move topics into sub forums all day. Like that's my jam. Just you tell me what to move and I'll do it. Everybody is different. And so you can find people that like, like the job, but if you are avoiding all work that you personally don't like and using your, your mods to do that, it's like, okay. Yep. That's, that yep. isn't kind either. <laughs> I think there comes it when you when you have something like that, if you have a mod like that, like that is a blessing. And they might not always be there, they might get busy and have to quit or things like that. So you just have to make sure any kind of like, tasks that you put on your community, you have to be willing to step in and do them if the person you've given them to isn't going to do it. It's kind of like being a store manager if you're in, in, the, in retail, right? The store manager has to be willing to do anyone else's job if they just all of a sudden don't show up one day, right? And that's the same thing in regards to running online communities. So just make sure whatever systems you put in place that result in like those tedious shit shoveling type of jobs that you're willing to do them sometimes too. <laughs> and also to remember that your staff or your mod team are human which means that they are going to have bad weeks and bad days. They're going to have good weeks and good days. And that you have to be flexible with this because it is an unpaid job. And the best way you're going to keep a mod team is if you care about them mm -hmm. and you work with them and that you're willing to do the hard work that they might not be capable of doing on that week or if they go out of town or whatever, like life happens sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to take it out on them because they decided to go on vacation or whatever, like if you're willing to take it on, that's how you're going to keep people on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, in the event of disagreement or conflict, do not have tantrums about how people are questioning your authority. Uh, this applies to both staff and to members. I will say as an aside, you might be like, some of these things seem contradictory, Sasha. Some of them are paradoxical. You're just like, I need to be strong but also listen to other people. And there's going to be one here where we're just like, you know, you need to have, you know, if you have a democracy, you need to listen to other people, but ultimately you're the final one accountable. Like, yes, there's kind of some duality to running a good community. Ooh. Welcome to leadership, bitches. Leadership. This is what it is. Yeah. There's it not one right answer. <laughs> yeah. You have to win all of the hats. You have to balance all of the things. If you are you building do. your own community, get used to figuring out how to do it without fucking anybody over. <laughs> yeah. It, there, you, you do have to have like a flexibility um and you you have to be balancing multiple things but like one thing that i see is like this i don't know if karen has ever seen this particular batch of screenshots but i have seen 
an incredible argument between basically um, an admin and their mod team where the admin took away all of the mod team's mod permissions because they got outvoted on something. They were just like, let's vote on what to do. Everyone disagreed with them. And then they responded by taking away everyone's mod powers and being like, you are personally ganging up on me and bullying me. And it is bullying because every time we vote, everyone disagrees with me. And it's like, my dude, my guy, you are the one who decided to run a voting democracy. Like you decided to take votes. And if you are being outvoted all of the time, like one, you maybe you are wrong a lot more than you think and you need to adjust. Or like two, maybe these aren't your people. But it was just, it was you. <laughs> and I have not don't... seen screenshots of this, by the way, but I can imagine um, a couple of communities where this might happen in, um, it... in, in some of the ones I, I know of over the years. Um, you know, it's it's not hard to imagine. Oh, thank you so much for giving us a follow, Kuma. And by the way, thank you also to Lunar for that 5,000 bits a few minutes ago. Love you so much. Um, but yeah, like you, when you set up the community, you decide how your mod team's going to run. You decide if it's going to be the kind of thing where you've got advisors and, and you're the king that makes the decision, or if it's going to be like votes and you all decide collectively, or if it's going to be something like so-and-so makes the decisions for this and so-and-so makes the decisions for that, you know, kind of like a committee or whatever, like you decide that. And so if you set up a system that you don't actually believe in, these things are going to happen. I mean, saying voting in democracy is like the easy example, but this could happen in any system. It doesn't matter. You have to figure out whichever one you choose is going to be the one that you're going to follow because at some point you're going to realize that your system has worked against your wishes. It happens. Oh, shock, shock and awe. I think democracy is just a particularly funny one because we are all Americans speaking from an American context. And so like... <laughs> The idea of democracy is like very much like valorized and fantasized about, but most people don't actually participate in civics because it's it's dead in this country. And so like running a small community is possibly a lot of people's first experience, like actually participating in some sort of democracy or republic, like truly, genuinely. And then people do it and they're like, wait a second, this is hard. This is weird. <laughs> I don't like it when people outvote me. Like, you know, it's it's bad actually when I can't get my way. Like there's just there's a lot of difficulties and so you have people throwing a uh, temper tantrums, um you like like I said you have people taking away the mod powers. That one led to like a total staff exodus. Um yikes. Like, Poor thing. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad for yeah. the person. You <laughs> would you um <laughs> yeah uh, so and, and just like if you're gonna have staff you need like a list of tasks you need a way to delegate um don't have staff just to faff about that's absolutely a thing people are just like here's your staff role but you you know like no one's doing any real work and like what happens then is like you have someone who has all power and no responsibility and that's bad because that means the only time they're going to do something is probably to cause a problem. Um, so just make sure that if you are having staff or mod, you know, moderators or whatnot, that they are not just there for decoration. Um, you, you might be like, but I want a bunch of people just in case I need something. I'm like, no, you like every, you know, idle hands are the devil's play things as they say. So, you know, Keep people occupied. And lastly, uh, minimize the amount of work that you're doing. Really in a community, just like, again, you're doing this for free. Do not stick your nose in everything. Do not be a micromanager. Do not be constantly policing private business. Like, this is a huge downfall. Like, once you, like, once again, we're at the park. Like, you cannot set the garbage cans on fire in my park. But if you meet somebody at my park, and you guys go to their house and kill somebody like you know what that's the problem of the cops not me like even that if, is not even if that person was kidnapped from my park it's not my problem it's still not my problem it happened at well, the house call the police <laughs> it happened at the house call the police and mm -hmm. people who like pe people who want to like deputize themselves to be kind of cops when really they are the park manager like 
first of all, this is going to drive you insane. Like all sorts of weird things are going to happen outside of the park with people who met each other there. Like that is so much work. And just like, do you want to sit there with the scissors and like trim every blade of grass? Like, do you like, do you really want to take up all of your time doing that? Like you might be like, oh, but the grass will be so pretty if every blade of grass is neatly organized. If I have all of the flowers arranged in little hearts, like it would be so pretty. I'm like, you know what? I'm sure it would be, but how is, is the park but otherwise some, okay? But some teenager is gonna come through and rip up those flowers. And then it's gonna annoy you that one of the <laughs> flowers was ripped up. And this is still an extended metaphor. You figure out how it's applied. Yeah, just you know, something like, <laughs> It's just, it's so much work to have to police every little thing. I think in the beginning, people are just like, I just, you know, I love being in control. I love being able to tell people what to do. And then you get hoisted by your own petard because you've created all of this work for yourself. Because once you start doing it, once you start being like, I'm the cop that will come to people's house houses when someone, people meet at the park and a kidnapping happens, just like, once you go to the first house, you got to go to all of the houses because what are you going to say? Are you going to be like, oh, I don't care about kidnappings anymore because I'm tired. Like you can't walk that back. So just once again, best not to start. <laughs> yes, yeah. best not to start. So, all right. So that brings us to, I think, our next core value that we've got here, and that is integrity. So this is integrity to lead by example. So we've kind of talked around this one through a lot of the things that we have said. And the reason for that is because this is one of the core values that I feel like nothing else works without integrity, right? Nothing else works if you are not going to live your values. So you might have great ethics, you might be really kind, um, you might be able to do all of these things. But if you are not conducting yourself in that way, if you're conducting yourself in that way only towards others and not just in general showing that example, then it's all going to fail. So this is where you really get that trust is when you have that integrity to lead by example. Yep. I've kind of already talked about this, but it is, it is a huge thing where like your behavior sets the whole tone of your group and that of your staff as well. Like how you guys are behaving in public is, you know, the cues that people will take. It is more of how you act than what you say. Um, generally, like I didn't really have any <laughs> mods or staff for the majority of the time that I've, that I've run Barber Monger. Um, and when I have eventually deputized people, I'm just like, I can see that you just like, you have the same value system as me. Um, and you act in a way in public that is kind of consistent with how I would want you to act in general. So just keep doing what you're doing. And um, if I am for some reason asleep and somebody starts posting a bunch of gore, uh, you can delete that now. But it is it is super important that also you're able to apologize um, and admit where you're wrong and actually be willing to kind of reverse decisions sometimes. Um, I had a conversation with another member one time who was like, yeah, I got like called out like brutally in front of a bunch of people at one point and I was absolutely wrong and it absolutely sucked to have to be like, yeah, actually what I said was bad and what I said was wrong. It's super cringy. Like none of us like it but it hugely strengthens your community to be able to do those things. Um, and you got, you also got to take the, the high road. Like when you are, when, <laughs> the way I also act like in communities kind of broadly in general and like the amount of shit that I will take in my own community, different things. Like if you punch me in my own, this is funny. I think people tend to react, you no, know, do this the other way. If you punch me in my own house where I have a disproportionate amount of power over you, I feel a much greater obligation to kind of like measure my response. Like I understand that there is a power disparity between us, that my reaction isn't just the reaction of me, Sasha, the person, but of me, Sasha, community dictator. And like, that is important. It is important for me to know that behind my punch is, you know, another 10,000 pounds of force. 
Um, whereas if I'm in somebody else's community, like I'm just Joe Schmo, I ain't nobody. Like I'm just a guy in the park. Like I have no power over you. Like I'm nobody. And so like somebody, if somebody like pops me in the face, I'm more likely to pop them back because just like what, like it doesn't matter in the same way. And I find that people, <laughs> I guess suspiciously do this differently because people <laughs> don't like to be disagreed with in a situation where they can lose, I guess, as opposed to being like, what harm am I capable of really committing? Like if I disagree with somebody and I get a little feisty kind of in another server and I'm just some Joe Schmo, just like at the end of the day, I don't control whether that person participates in that community. I can't ban them. I can't mute them. I can't delete their messages. I can't kick them out and then smear them. Just like they have the full power to retaliate against me in equal measure. Like we are two guys scuffling in the park. And, you know, that kind of will go how it will, depending on the park, depending on the level of the scuffle, it's, it's equal. And so, you know, that's, that's how it is. Whereas like, I have the ability, I have so much more ability to harm somebody and also to just make them feel like really, really bad because we haven't talked about this, but I guess I could say it is really painful actually to be banned and kicked out of communities. It feels so bad. It, it especially feels so bad when you feel like how, you know, could this, how could I have avoided this? Is it by reading all of the silent cues that nobody explained to me anywhere? Is it because just like, I'm not allowed to disagree with anybody who has any power over me? Like when I know that if I just kick somebody out without explaining myself, um, without giving people an opportunity to change their behavior, without allowing them kind of equal participation, I could like really genuinely hurt somebody. And I would rather deal with like a little more punching in my direction than be responsible for causing that kind of harm to somebody. And so that is a, that is a huge example that I try to lead by. I am very gracious with people who annoy me in my own community. <laughs> so, And I think, I think that we all kind of like implicitly know this, but it's hard to act like that when you're the leader, right? Because I'll give mm -hmm. an example of where I think all of us internet uh, denizens kind of understand this. If you are on Twitter and you are doing the tweeting, it feels different to get quote tweeted and dunked on by some five follower 15 year old than it does by like, I don't know, JK Rowling or like what's another big Twitter account, some YouTuber that you follow or yeah, or like it's, it feels, yeah, it feels very different. And it's because you inherently know that larger audience means that there is a power imbalance. And now you are going to experience their punch in a much more forceful way. So when you are running a community, you are that large Twitter account with a thousand followers. Even if your community is relatively small, uh, you are still that person with the strongest punch. So you can't just punch back when someone punches you. You have to have that example. And, and the thing that you're going to notice is if you really do hold your punches with people when you are setting that example, then other people in your community are going to be willing to fight civilly. So we are very um, conflict averse, I would say, on the internet. We don't like it, okay? We don't want to fight. We don't want to argue. We don't want to disagree. But if you model um, healthy disagreement and healthy argument for people, then when they start getting punched and they're just the regular Joe in the community, they're going to feel safe to have that conversation. They're not gonna like, they're gonna be a lot less likely to come crying to you to fix it for them. They're gonna be a lot more likely to not like escalate the situation with the person that punched them. They're gonna probably try to keep things even because they watched you be the leader and pull your punches, right? So it is very important that whatever behavior you want to have in your community, that you set that example. And I think that is a big reason why um, some communities thrive and some communities fail 
uh, even if they're set up like in very different ways. Like I can give you all of my tips and everything for what I think the best way to set up a community is. But at the end of the day, the most important thing to setting up a community is you because your community is going to follow you. So you have to make sure that everything that you have set up, that everything that you've planned, that everything that you've laid out, you can do all of those things and lead all of those things with integrity. Because if you can't, then you need to make a new system because it's not going to work. Even if you've used like all my tips that I've given over the years, it's not going to work if you don't feel it in your heart and you can't Mm -hmm. set that example every day. And I think that that actually is kind of a perfect transition into our last one, Mm -hmm. which is the accountability of it all, Mm -hmm. having an accountability to each of our communities, because part of that integrity is accepting the fact that at the end of the day, this is you, you are the leader. You can have a mod team behind you. You can have a very uh, good community that knows how to respect each other and knows how to have disagreements in civil ways that can be mostly self, uh, self policed for lack of a better Mm -hmm. word. Um, however, at the end of the day, it's, it's yours, which Mm -hmm. means everything that happens is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you are not running with integrity, you're going to have to deal with the consequences of that in your accountability of it. If you are not a, if you are not treating people kindly or equally, you are going to have to be accountable for that. If you don't have the respect or the strength that it takes to run this, you are going to be the person at the end of the day paying that bill. Mm -hmm. Uh, This park is a public park, but it is your park, baby. It's my park. Uh, (laughs) My park. You get to, you're the problem. Like you're it. Yep. I will briefly on the, on the integrity thing. I just, you made me think of a story really quick. I remember once I was out with a friend, um, like having dinner, I was like busy that night and somebody decided to start like a nice, really bad devil's advocate conversation in my server. And I just got one of my mess, my members messaging me and she was just like, clean up on aisle clown. And like, I was busy. <laughs> I was busy that night. Like I just like I was like I looked at it. I'm like, okay, do I have to stop what I'm doing and do this? But my members who had seen how I treated people, like all of them just like quietly came in and hug box to this person. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to tell anybody how to do anything. It just happened on its own. So like you lead by example and you have this fascinating thing where just like suddenly you don't have to work as hard like you work hard or like you do the good work up front and the rest of it will carry you but yes so accountability um you like everything ultimately does kind of fall on you like i'm sorry like this is you know this is the part that nobody i think really likes like everyone wants to have like the god king power but i'm just like well um that means that when things are bad they are your fault at the end of the day it's you and you you know people will be like oh you know well it was the mods it was this it was that i'm just like yeah but you're the one who was ultimately in control of this you were in charge you were the one that set it up you are the one again who has to be leading with integrity like you are accountable and so when someone is just like yeah but like i can't force people to do anything i'm just like i'm not necessarily saying like you have to like hold a gun to everybody's head and make them act like robots in the way that you prefer. But like, ultimately, if you have tried solution A and it has failed, it is incumbent upon you to try solution B and solution C and solution D. And you have to keep working at it. You have to be accountable. And when you make bad choices, again, you have to apologize. You have to change things. Oh, and when, oh, here's another thing. When you make people promises, you actually have to keep them. I have seen what? a what? <laughs> I have seen a server that was just like, we're gonna have a town hall on a contentious topic, and we're gonna let all the members like come in and speak. That your Karen's just like <laughs> Lunar. Why did you send me a hydrate when she said that? I because I, I was there for that situation. It was insane. Anyways, <laughs> so they're just like, we are going to have a town hall on this contentious topic, and everybody can come in and say their piece, and we're going to abide by the will of the community. You wanna know what happened? The will of the community did not gel in the way 
that the mods and admins thought like this was a situation yeah mm -hmm. this was a situation where i was considered like i don't know just annoying and like the minority and then i showed up there and i did not most of the talking and i was definitely not the minority and they were just like you know what no we're not actually going to do the thing that we said that we're going to do like we didn't like the results so we're not going to do it like and it's like okay cool so you know nothing nothing means anything um you have no integrity you don't respect the the decision and now you're not holding yourself accountable it was so stupid yeah. they should have just said no we don't like that this is the decision that we're making if that makes you not feel welcome in our community, then we understand. That's what they should have done, but they just, they refused to take responsibility in that situation. It was maddening. No. <laughs> Go ahead. I was just gonna be like, this applies to like a staff too. If you have a staff member that is running around wet and wild, causing trouble, like it's on you to like get it together and to, to do something about this. Like you have, again you've appointed yourself god king so just like that means that all of this falls back on you yep and if you are not ready to take accountability if if that is something that you are still practicing it is in my opinion that you are not ready to take a server because the reality is that it is going to be a lot all of the time mm -hmm. uh, and it's that explaining yourself it is that like walking people through your steps pro and process that's all part of the accountability treating people equally is all part of the accountability because no one is going to be there over your shoulder telling you how to do it because you are the person over people's shoulders telling them mm -hmm. how to do it yeah yep. so when i was when i was arranging this um outline that uh, sasha had like put together for us i wanted to make sure we talked about this one last because this is the one that burns me up more than anything. You want to like make sure that I never ever trust you. You come to me and you tell me, I'm sorry, I didn't want to ban you, but I was outvoted. Nothing sets me on fire more than to hear that. And I have heard it. And um, if this makes you feel guilty, I apologize. We're, you know, we'll still be friends and I'll be friendly to you. But like, I can never trust somebody that says that. Like that destroys everything. If you cannot be accountable to your community, if you're going to say that like, oh, you're, you know, you've been punished because everyone voted for it, but I voted in your favor. And it's like, bitch you're the leader you know it's kind of like when people say when people when when like okay when like uh whoever the president is because they've all they've all done this in the modern age since twitter was a thing they'll like tweet something and you'll you'll inevitably look in the comments and you'll see someone in the comments being like bitch you're the president just do something and like and i know that's not how our government works okay but that's how, i mean that's what they're expressing they're expressing that like it doesn't matter if it's not your fault you are the leader. You have to take the L. Like you're the one that said, I see this system and I think I can run it really well and I'm going to be responsible, right? Or I set up this this particular um, server or subreddit or whatever, you know, and, and I'm going to be responsible for it, right? Like that's what you're doing when you say that you're going to be the leader. You get credit for the wins, but guess what? You get credit for the losses too. You get credit for all of it. It doesn't matter if it happened while you were on vacation. And you taught your staff. They followed what they learned from you. And it's also incredibly important to know that there will be more losses than there will be wins. Well, and also like people, the way they think, it's going to feel like yeah. there's more losses, even if Absolutely. there's not. It, that's not a bad thing, but like we as a brain are going to interpret it, any sort of conflict as a loss. Like, because you, you have to walk through that. Like, mm -hmm. the, like having anything contentious or anything like that, anytime where you, it's not even, anytime that you have to work through something, it's all on you. Yep. And there's going to be a lot more of that than it is going to be people being like, oh my God, Karen, Landon, Sasha, you guys are so amazing for running a server. Like, that's not what it is. And I'm not saying yeah. that, that that doesn't happen, but your brain's going to focus on the losses. It is. Yeah. It's just natural. Mm -hmm. Negative yeah. bias. Mm -hmm. yeah no it's from time to time I do get people being like I'm so glad this community still exists and I'm just like 
wow, thanks, because I'm just, I'm just a gardener in the public park. Like that's, that's kind of how I feel most of the time. And the work is fulfilling in and of itself. But yeah, just, it is, it is maddening when someone is like, yes, I understand that you haven't done anything wrong. I understand that you are correct, but I was outvoted. I'm just like, you know, that the vote is bad. Like, you know that that, like, these people are being emotional. You know that they're wrong. And you're, but you're just like, you know what? Sometimes I just have to sacrifice people on the altar. And, like, <laughs> I guess this is more of a, I guess we'll say, personal opinion. Um, That is a level of, like, tragic political cunning. Like, for the communities that we're talking about, like, this is not the Democratic and Republican Party. This is not Game of Thrones where, like, other people are, like, a grist for your mill or, like, sacrifices on your altar. It's not supposed to be just like, yeah, well, I got to just completely torch this one person or allow them to be torched in order to, like, sate the cravings of the mob. Like, that is a grim, dark, like, world to recreate in your for for the most part like smaller communities it's just or it's in any community really where like you know that's that's how it goes and so for leaders to do that is just oh it really does it just kind of destroys your faith in them as a person because you're just like wow you do that to me yikety yeah. yikes yeah. and the thing is is by the way if you do this if you have made this kind of decision in the past like I've done it before. I have a very specific memory of a time that I did it and I banned somebody who had a very bad reputation, understandably so considering what they did. I've mentioned it. Um, and I was like, I need to ban you because every other forum has banned you, even though you have been nothing but like pleasant on my community. I have no evidence of present wrongdoing, but if I'm the only person who doesn't ban you, it will look bad. Um, oh, and it haunted me because I was just like, you know, I, I was not really accountable. I was just a hostage. Um, and, uh, and you know, it was, I felt, I felt outvoted by like, a by like, not necessarily moderators at that time, but by the community. And I did something that went against what I knew was right. And you do, you have to be accountable also, you know, but we'll talk briefly about, um, about support roles. Um, not every, not by not being the God King, um, congratulations and everything isn't your fault, but you do have a duty to kind of like help guide this person. Like I depend on other people to correct me, to contradict me, to expand my mind, to make suggestions, to come up with ideas. Like all of those things are super important. Like I might be the person that has to take the major L's but it is super important to have people who are doing that support work. So even if you're watching this and you're, you're thinking about like, well, what, what's my role as maybe someone who's not totally in charge, like you are not there to validate every single person, every single thing this person says, like you shouldn't be a yes man. Like you're not there to be a clone. You're there to be another kind of contributor. Uh, so that is also really important. Um, yeah. and like if push, you're, push your if, leader to explain themselves, like if you don't understand why they're doing what they're doing, or, you know, even if you do agree, like it's, it's your job to make sure they fully thought it through. Mm -hmm. And if you're so jealous, if you're just like, but I want to be the God King, I'm like, just make your own community. My God, there it's is just a, a you know what? <laughs> regrettably it is just a button and you can do it at any time you can set yourself up for your own months and years of uh of growth and suffering of picking up dog poop in the park and if yeah. you choose to push that button then you will meet some demon at a crossroads and you will realize that you sold your soul <laughs> all it's right and it. on that note i would love to um ask everybody um to please follow us so sasha as our guest if you could go first where can everybody find you and i'm, I'm going to go ahead and link um barbara monger in the chat for anybody um you can find all of the barbara monger stuff there you too can join the circus at any time and honk my clown nose at barbara monger .me. 
That's B A R B E R Monger M O N G E R dot me. There is a link to the Discord server on the web version, or you can just click around in like announcements or news, and the Discord server is there. Uh, it is a one on one role play search site, but I spend a lot of time posting links to long essays in my server. If you like that kind of thing, that's where it's at. Absolutely. All right. Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Land in Maine. Uh, it's, I wrote a poem that I'm really trying to get out there this past week. So if you would like to like go to Twitter and I don't know, like it, uh, I'd appreciate it personally. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> All right. Yes. Um, I think I saw you, that Karen? one. It was good. It was good. Oh, thank you, Sasha. All right, you can find me right here on Twitch. If you like what you saw today, please uh, drop me a follow. Also, I post all of my VODs on YouTube, so you should subscribe to my YouTube channel because if you ever miss any of this juicy, juicy content, you can always go there. I always make sure that they're up within a day or two, so that's pretty reliable. Um, my main social media is Twitter. If you're ever like wondering what's going on, if like a, the show is not live or whatever, all of the actual like important information is going to be on Twitter. That's the best place to check for stuff like that. And then if you want to just hang out with me, you can join my Discord. Um, it's really a role play help Discord, but it is also about my content. It's a Discord server that me, Landon, and Kendra share. Um, and it's basically like the stuff that we're interested in, which is which is role play, media analysis um web 1.0 and 2.0 dichotomies which is kind of the category that today fits into uh it's all about stuff like that so those are the places you can find me um and uh and yeah i think that's it i'm gonna find somebody to raid while i'm finding somebody to raid um sasha or landon any closing thoughts oh. uh, hey you know what if you want to do it you can do it i think I think actually everyone should run a community at some point in time, because I think it really shows you the type of leader that you would be. And there can be a lot of growth from there um, because being a leader is a good thing, especially if you have the capacity to do it. I think my biggest, my, my final parting piece is to just be open-minded about the kinds of people you can connect with and kind of like, behavior and shared goals over personality a lot of like again I guess kind of say finally like ethics over comfort because I have found that people who are very different from me or who maybe I would not have ever expected to be friends with or get along with or people that like I guess you have to think about this too like my role play website has been running for 11 years now with very little moderation and advertising past a certain point it is upheld by a lot of people who never talk to me personally, simply choosing to uphold those values. And I go through role play ads on my website sometimes, and I am just like, what in the absolute honky donk is this? Like, these are not people that I would necessarily choose to hang out with or befriend, but every single person in there is contributing to the community keeping going. Every person that posts a role play ad keeps the site active for the next people that come to it and find a role play partner. And all of those different people are holding my community together. And even if sometimes I think, you know, they're not my kind of person, if they are upholding our shared values and our shared goals, then we're actually all on the same team. And so seeing that like and kind of holding that in your mind when you go into making a community will help I think soften a lot of the potential conflict when you see it less as trying to get a bunch of perfect personalities to gel together and more about like building a group or a team you know moving towards like a shared goal and keeping something alive like I think it could be a really fulfilling experience as opposed to a really stressful one I love that all right. Great, great comments, you guys. All right, we're going to go ahead and raid and depug Zoomies for today. Um, I think after that serious topic, we all deserve to look at a sleeping pug. Um, and Pug Zoomies is playing Hollow Knight right now, which is a, a pretty fun game. So we can all go watch some of that. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching today. And as always, of course, don't forget to make it a great day. Don't forget to be awesome. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.
。